Hi guys, Jordan with Motion Array, and today we're gonna be showing you how to create an iPhone text message effect inside inside Adobe After Effects. Like it or not, phones are a really important part of our lives. You see this effect all the time in TV, movies, and commercials, and whatever reason you have for putting it in your production, I'm gonna be showing you the way that I go about doing this effect personally. I'm gonna be showing you not only how to create the text bubble itself, but also how to turn it into an auto-scaling text box, so that whenever you type in anything, it automatically scales to fit exactly the way it should. Then I'm gonna show you how to animate it so that it actually looks like the real deal. And then at the very end, if you wanted to do stuff like 3D track it to an object in your scene, I'm gonna be showing you how to quickly do that at the very end. But if you just wanted to skip all of that and use a template to get the quickest possible result, here at Motion Array, we have some awesome templates to create this effect and I'll link them in the description below. But now the very first thing that we're gonna do to actually create this effect is actually to screen record a conversation that we're having over text with somebody else. This does two different things. One, it gives you a frame of reference that you can look back to and actually make sure that your effect is looking like the real deal. But the other thing is that if you're just really in a pinch for time, you can use that to just create a nice looking effect in and of itself. Slide your frame over and then have the conversation going on beside you. This actually looks surprisingly good. And if you just cut out and splice out some of the dead sections in between, you get a really nice flow. But now that you have a frame of reference, let's dive into After Effects and take a look at how to get this effect. Okay, so here we are inside of After Effects and I'm just gonna create a new composition. We're gonna make it 3840 by 2160 pixels. This is bigger than 1080p. It just helps us to make sure that if we have to scale up our items, they're not gonna be too pixelated. And the first thing that we're gonna do here is we're actually just gonna import a reference image to help us just frame out what our text bubble is actually supposed to look like. Okay, so here we have our reference image. So we're gonna create a new solid. Just make sure that you're not highlighting any sort of layers here. Just click off to deselect and go up here to your rectangle tool and click and hold and then go over here to your rounded rectangle tool. This is the one we're gonna be using. Release and then you have your rounded rectangle and now you can click and drag and try to create somewhat of a similar shape. It's not gonna be perfect, but that's good enough. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click on our new shape layer here and let's just uh, hit enter and we're gonna rename it text bubble. Just keep everything nice and organized. We're gonna click T to bring up opacity and then drop it down here so that we can see both our uh, solid and also the background image at the same time. We're gonna zoom in here and we're gonna try to see if we can line these two up nice and perfect. I've actually got it to be the correct blue color. I'm just gonna make it white so that we can see a good contrast here and you can see that there's a couple things wrong. The size is close, um, but it's not quite there and then also the roundness of it isn't quite right. A good way to go about this here is to drop down your little uh, drop down here and then go to contents, go to rectangle, and then go to rectangle path. From here is a great place to change up the size instead of using just the global scaling feature. If you scale up just the whole image as a global thing, then you might end up getting harsh pixelation. So let's deselect this little constrained proportions icon here and now we can move our width and our height independently of each other. Scale up the height a little bit, scale up the width a little bit, and that's looking right about perfect. But now we need to uh, adjust the corners there, and they're not quite round enough. But thankfully, because we ended up using the rounded rectangle, we have a parameter here called roundness, and we can scale it up here till we get exactly the look that we're going for. That's pretty good. Okay, cool. But we wanna get the color perfect. And this is another reason why having a reference image is so great, because now you can just click on your layer, go up to fill, grab the uh, eyedropper tool here and now you can hover over the actual image here and you can just copy the exact color. If you need reference, uh, you can see that for me here, it's 1989FF. If you wanna just type that into your uh, shape fill color, you can just do that and you can end up with the same result. So click okay. Now let's go back here to our text bubble and let's raise up the opacity back to 100%. And wouldn't you know it, we have our text bubble. It's looking pretty good. Okay, so now before we actually make our text bubble auto scale so that it reacts to our text, we need to have a piece of sample text there to begin with. So let's hit either Control or Command if you're on a Mac, and then T, and that brings up our type tool. And let's click over top here and let's type out something. Let's uh, type in the same stuff that we've got here in this text bubble, for example. Just give me a heads up. Cool. 
And so what's really important here is that you use the appropriate font if you want it to look exact. So what iOS uses as of the time of recording this video is called San Francisco. That's the name of the font here. And actually, if we click and bring this over here, I'll zoom in here and I'll just prove to you that this is pretty much a carbon copy. So you can see that this is the font that iOS uses before, after, <laughs> perfect. If you wanted to use a different font and just uh, give it your own style, go for it. Uh, but I'll leave a link to the San Francisco font in case that's really what you want to use. Okay, so now comes the time where we actually make our text bubble auto scale. Now, this normally would be a little bit challenging. You got to write in a bunch of scripts and everything, but I've just left a copy and paste solution for you in the description. So if you go down to section one and copy the script there uh, I've left for you, then follow me here to your text bubble. Go down to contents, rectangle one, rectangle path one, and then under the size here, you wanna hit alt or option and hold that and then click on size. And this allows you to start actually adding script and underneath that parameter. And now just paste in the script that you copied from section one in the description below. Click off and you'll notice there is a little bit of a problem here. It indicates there's an error in the expression and you can see here that uh, it's not pointing to the right item. That's okay, you just need to change one little thing here. My text layer, that's just a sample placeholder uh, layer name. You actually need to make that exactly the same text as the name of this text layer here. But the easiest way to, uh, to get that perfect is just to click on your text layer, hit the enter key, and then copy that exact phraseology that you got there. Now click into your script here and uh, highlight my text layer. Make sure to not highlight either the quotation marks on the other side and just paste in the name of your text layer. And now you can see that it automatically scales around the parameters of the text. It's perfect. And if we click on our text and we retype it out, that's not quite what we're wanting, but we're getting close. There's another parameter that we have to add. So if you go to section two underneath the description, you'll see the second script that you have to paste in. And if you follow me down here to position, make sure that it's position underneath the contents rectangle, rectangle path one, not underneath transform. It's a very important difference. Has to be the position underneath contents. Click and hold alt or option again and click position and paste in this second section two script under this section, click off and do the same thing where you copy the exact text name of your text layer and then go back in here and change my text layer to be the actual text layer name in your project. All we have to do is just click and drag over top and that's it. And now when we type it in, it auto scales exactly to what our text is doing. The only problem is that there's not enough padding around it. It's just lined up to exactly the edges of our text, which is not exactly what we want, but adding some extra padding around that is super easy. Click on the add feature here underneath your text bubble layer, and then add an offset paths feature. Drop this down a little bit here, and now all you have to do is just scale up until you get the exact size that makes you happy. We got the width, like the, the height of it correct, but then the actual width is just a little bit too squished. We want it to be uh, so that the text is ending right about the time where this curvature starts here. So all we have to do to do that is just go up to our transform features here, go to scale, uncheck uniform scale, and then just make it a little bit wider. And then we can take our anchor point here, and just move it so that it's a little bit more centered. And there you go, we have our perfectly working auto scaling iPhone text bubble. This works great. But now here's what's also awesome, is that if you click enter, you've got a new line and you can just keep going. Highlight your text here, give yourself a little bit more spacing between your lines and when you make adjustments in characters or if you have any paragraph changes that you need, it all reacts accordingly. It's really, really nice. So now you might be thinking, cool, we got this nice effect, but do I have to do that whole process for every single piece of text? No, you do not. You can actually really save a lot of time here by doing the following. Highlight both the piece of text as well as the text bubble. Right click 
and pre-compose. Make sure you move all attributes into the new composition. We can say this is line one. Hit OK. Cool. Now let's dive in to this composition. Highlight both of these and copy. Go back to composition one, either up here, or we can also hit the tab button and then you can go back to composition one this way. Now click here in your composition and paste in the text. It'll be kind of like pasted right over top here, but it'll be independent. So you can change this one without changing the one that you originally created. So now you can highlight both of these as well. Pre-compose again, line two, and so that's how you can start to build out an entire text conversation really quickly. But now before we do any actual animating, what we need to do is build out the entire text conversation as we want it to look in just a still image format so that it looks something like we have here in our uh, example text conversation. Now, one problem that you might notice here as you're starting to build out your text conversation is that unless you have your anchor points perfectly aligned, if you needed to make any small adjustments, like say, for example, you didn't like the look of this particular bubble, you wanted it to be a little bit wider, it doesn't actually scale properly because our anchor point is way off here for some reason. So if that's your problem, how do you get your anchor point right back to center? It's really simple. Just highlight your bubble shape layer in question and then go up to this button right here. It's called pan behind and you hold control if you're on a PC, command if you're on a Mac and then click it twice. And now your anchor point is directly in the center of your bubble and you can make adjustments and they'll all be perfectly centered. So let's keep on building out our text conversation. And as you're creating the text for the other person in the conversation, the text color that you can use is a little bit of a subjective gray, but if you wanted the exact value, it's 27272B. So after a few lines back and forth, you should end up with something that looks more or less like this. It's important to remember that with iOS text messages, these lines don't all have to extend to the same length. It's actually very common for them to be very mismatched in terms of their, uh, in terms of how far they extend. And depending on your personal preference, you can squeeze these to be even closer if you'd like. So now it's time to actually animate our text bubbles to appear as if they were appearing on a screen. So if you were to actually look at how these text messages pop up on your phone, it's really actually pretty simple. What they do is it just rises up a little bit about the size of the text itself. So if we took line one, for example, it goes from about here to about here. And then the opacity just goes from zero to 100. That's really all that there is to it. But the easiest way to go about this is instead of actually changing the position of each individual layer, instead, anywhere inside of your composition here, right click, then click new, null object. It doesn't matter where the null object is here in your frame. All that matters is that you parent each of these lines to the null object. Got this little squiggly line here. This is the parent pick whip. Just click and drag it to null one. Or you can click this line here and choose null one. If you don't see this option, might be that your toggle switches and modes here at the bottom is preventing it from being visible for some reason, or you could see if dragging this in or out displays it. But once you can see it here, just make sure that each individual line is parented to null one. And now if we change the position of null one, we change the position of everything. Let's bring this to a starting point where the first piece of text is in about the middle of the frame here. And then let's keyframe the position here to start exactly where it is. And let's go forward about eight or nine frames. So you can use the page up or page down button if you have a full size keyboard. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Or you can just kind of zoom in and you can measure out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight frames. And then just raise the vertical position here about the height of the actual text layer itself. So this is what it looks like. Nothing crazy. Right click here on the second keyframe and then go to keyframe assistant, easy ease in. Take all of your layers, all five of them. Hit T for opacity and bring it down to zero. Now for this first line here, bring up the opacity, keyframing it to start at zero here with this first keyframe here for position on the null object. And then go forward till one frame before the position ends here and then bring the opacity all the way back up to 100. And this is what you get. It's a really, really simple effect. I'm just gonna put it on loop here for a second. It's really simple. And then as your scene progresses, 
just move forward to a new position, keyframe the position again, go forward the same number of frames, and then raise it up about the size of your text layer. Then go to the next line that you want to reveal, go to the first frame of that new animation, keyframe the opacity to start at zero, and then bring it up to 100. And this is what we have. And then when you go through for the rest of the lines of text, you get something that looks like this. Now all that there's left to do is to actually prompt there to be a reason for you to be getting text messages in your scenes at all, and then to add little cues like sound effects to help really sell the idea that you're actually receiving that message. Now the cherry on top here is that if you wanted to track your text so that it lines up with your phone as you're moving it around, I'll show you how to do that really quickly. So take your text message sequence that you just created here and highlight everything with Control or Command A. Then right click and pre-compose. Make sure that it says move attributes into the new composition and then call it something like tracking sequence. Now this is acting as a single unit and this is really important. Now bring in the piece of footage that you actually want to track it onto. For me, it's this shot of this woman in the subway here. So let's bring it into our composition underneath our text message sequence here. Let's just position our text so that it looks as if it kind of belongs in the world of the footage here. That's good for right now. Hide this tracking sequence for the moment. We're gonna add a new null object and then click and highlight the footage layer here. Go to your tracking section, and if you can't find that, just go up to Window, Tracker, and that'll pop it up. And you're gonna wanna track motion. It's gonna pop up this little tracking dot here. You wanna click and drag this over to the thing that you actually wanna track the motion of. And you wanna choose an area of high contrast. So if we just kinda scrub through the footage here, it's really hard. I would love to choose something like, say for example, this notch here or like the camera lens here, but none of those are really high contrast. But the nice thing here is that I noticed that her finger isn't really moving any different than the phone. It's sort of locked onto it here. So we can actually use her finger as a point of reference. So click and place it over top of the area that you wanna track, and then make sure you're on the first frame of the section you wanna track. And then choose how much tracking you want. Do you want position? rotation, scale, or a combination of all three. For me, there's no real rotation that I need to worry about, so I just need to worry about position. Now this is a really important piece here. You wanna to go to Edit Target and choose your Null Layer. Then once you're ready, click Analyze Forward and let the work begin. Cool, once it's done, all you have to do is hit Apply. Apply X and Y. And there you go, now your null object is following the thing that you told it to track. All you have to do at this point is reactivate your tracking sequence here, go to the first frame, and then parent your text message sequence to the null object. And it's kind of tough to see the actual motion happening here, but if we turn off our footage layer, we can see that there is motion taking place that's locking it directly to the phone. So that's how you get the iPhone text bubble effect custom inside of After Effects. Like I mentioned before, if you guys did wanna save a lot of time, we do have a template that can get you this look right out of the box. But that about wraps up this video. If you guys liked it, please consider liking so that YouTube knows to spread it to as many people as humanly possible and subscribe and click the bell icon to never miss another video. I've got some awesome stuff coming up in the near future. Two weeks from now, you're not gonna wanna miss out. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Oh, 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 oh.